Thank you, everyone. Hope you enjoyed your lunch. Thank you for your patience. We are going to continue with the case. Mr. Hayes, you are still under oath. Counsel, whenever you're ready. You got caught with the murder weapon, right? Yes, sir. This gun? Yes, sir. The gun that killed Crystal Johnson? Yes, sir. Five days after her murder? Yes, sir. You had it? Yes, sir. And you shot it at the police? No. You did not shoot at the police? No. So you dropped the gun and it accidentally discharged, right? Yes, sir. And that's your testimony? Yes, sir. But then after you finished running from the police, you poured bleach on your hands? Yes, sir. Okay, but you didn't fire the gun. It dropped. Yes, sir. Did you pour bleach on your feet? No. I put it all over my body. Okay. You rubbed it on your arms and your hands. Yes, sir. Even though you didn't shoot the gun with your hands. Exactly. And according to your testimony today, you had previously possessed the gun, correct? This gun? Yes, sir. Okay. And you got it some time before from Mr. Blackman, correct? Yes, sir. And you needed it for your own protection, right? Yes, sir. Because living in that neighborhood and being a gang member is tough, right? Yes, sir. You go outside in gang territory and other gang members might shoot at you? Yes, sir. Okay. And you might shoot back at them. If need to be at the time. Yes, sir. And you don't even, well, you might be shot at in your neighborhood, even if you weren't in a gang, correct? It's possible. Because sometimes it's a, you know, shoot first, ask questions later type of situation. You're right. Okay. They might see a young black man on a certain block and just assume he's in a gang. Yes. And you previously recall, you know, testifying in the grand jury in this case, right? Yes. And that was on January 25th, 2018? Somewhere around that time. Yes, sir. And the grand jury for a woman put you under oath? Yes. She made you raise your right hand? Yes. Swear to tell the truth? Nothing but the truth. The whole truth? Yes, sir. And this nice prosecutor, Mr. Berry, asked you some questions in that grand jury? Yes, sir. And isn't it true that he asked you if you had seen that gun in Mr. Blackman's possession before the day you were arrested and you said no? No, I don't recall that. Turning your attention to page 11, the bottom 22 through 24. And the specific question and answer on page 12, lines 4 through 8. Okay, have you seen the gun prior to Romeo giving it to you? After T, after you saw it on T and prior to Romeo giving it to you, have you seen that gun again? No. Isn't that the question that Mr. Berry asked you and isn't that the answer you gave? If that's what you have in your paperwork. So you are agreeing with me that you testified one way under oath in the grand jury and you are testifying a different way now? No. Okay, let's go over this again. 
Today, you are saying that prior to the date of your arrest, Mr. Blackman had given you this gun for your protection, right? That's what you are telling the jury today. Yes, sir. And in the grand jury, Mr. Berry had asked you if Mr. Blackman had, if you had seen Mr. Blackman with the gun before and you said no. Sir, it's the difference between seeing and giving. Okay. So when he gave you the gun, you didn't see it. I didn't say that. I said it's a difference. You're wording it different. Well, why don't you explain to me in your own mind what the difference between seeing and giving is? I'm not saying that. I said you're worded it different, sir. Okay. Would you agree with me that in the grand jury under oath, you had said that prior to the day you were arrested, you had never seen Mr. Blackman with that gun. Before the day I was arrested? Correct. Did I see him with the gun? Yes. The gun that he gave me? This gun right here? Yes, sir. But in the grand jury, you told the grand jury, no, you had not seen it. If that's what it say on your paperwork, then yes. And I want to turn to you being arrested with this firearm. You were with two individuals, right? Somebody you knew as Boosie. Is that right? Yes, sir. And Mr. Blackman, correct? Yes, sir. And you saw the police lights come on? Yes, sir. And you were afraid they were going to stop you, correct? Yes, sir. So you guys start to run. Yes, sir. And as you're running, Mr. Blackman tosses you the gun, correct? We stopped and he gave me the gun and I ran. Mr. Blackman had a parole warrant, so I thought it was in my best interest when my friend needs help to give. And he's trying to give me the gun so he could get away to take the gun if he's giving it to me and run with it I'm just trying to understand the order of events I understand so first you start running yes sir and then at some point you stop yes we stop and he gives you the gun yes and then you immediately start running again Yes. Okay. Because you don't want to get caught with the gun? Yeah. I mean, no one wants to get caught with it, but I don't have a parole warrant. Well, yeah, once you have the gun, you didn't stand around, right? No, no one did. And then you ran, run to a friend's house. Is that Mimi? M I M I? Nini? Nini? And as a Nancy? Yes, sir. And Mr. Norwood finds you there, correct? Yeah. Boosie finds you there. And about three minutes later, the police show up and you get arrested? No. The police were there. They weren't inside. Mr. Norwood came inside, talked to me, left out, and then the police came in. Okay, and you later learned that Mr. Norwood was the one who told the police? I figured it out at that moment, but yeah. Okay, and that sort of goes against the rules of the game. You're not supposed to tell the police where your friends are hiding, right? You're right. Okay. And similarly, it's, I would say, in bad form to shoot a female, right? Yeah. Okay. That you know it's a violation, correct? A violation? A violation of the rules, the unspoken rules? Yeah. Okay. There's not like an actual rule book, right? Yes, sir. 
you don't write down a manifesto or, or no any anything or gang rules. That's not a thing. And I want to talk about a couple of rests later. On March 22nd, 2015, you said you were arrested for murder, right? Yes, sir. And that was specifically the murder of Crystal Johnson? Yes, sir. And as you admitted on direct, the police asked you a rarity of questions about the Goonies, right? Yes, sir. And about Mr. Blackman and about Mr. Smith, correct? Yes, sir. And you tell the police that you don't know them. Yes, sir. And then the detective, Detective Sullivan, specifically tells you, you are the number one suspect. Objection, basis, hearsay. Are you offering it for the truth of the matter asserted? No, the overall effect of the evidence. Pose the question. And then Detective Sullivan says, you are the number one suspect, right? Yes, sir. And after he tells you that, you change your story? If that's the way it seems, then I would say, yeah. Okay. So after you, the number one suspect, suddenly you know Mr. Blackman and you know Mr. Smith, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And you were scared of being a number one suspect in a murder, right? No. You weren't scared that you... I'm not saying I wasn't scared. I'm saying that's not the reason. Well, you didn't like it when the police said that you were a number one suspect in a murder, right? No, I didn't like being called the number one murderer in a case I didn't do. Well, that's not the problem for you anymore, right? Because you have immunity. It's not about immunity. The truth is what got me away. The truth like you told the truth to the grand jury or the truth like you are telling now. The truth in general. But you do have immunity now, correct? Yes, sir. And it's your understanding that that's a promise from these prosecutors that you cannot be charged? Okay. I'm asking you, what is it? You testify to this on direct? Asking me, what is immunity? Yeah. What agreement do you have with the government? I don't have an agreement. My agreement is the simple immunity that he gave me. I come, I tell the truth, the accurate truth of the events with this case. If I don't, then I'm indicted. Understood. And it's the government, the prosecutors, and the ones that are giving you this immunity, right? Yes. And it's up to the prosecutors to determine whether or not you are telling the truth. Yes, sir. And if they don't think you are telling the truth, they could pull your immunity agreement, correct? Yes, sir. And then you could be indicted for a rarity of crimes. Yes, sir. You were charged with several crimes or two crimes in and around 2020. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And one of those was dealing meth. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. And that's many years after you're a member of the Goonies. Yes, sir. And you testified that you joined the Goonies in either 2013 or 2014, correct? Yes, sir. And were you a member of another gang prior to that? No, sir. And you had moved into the area? Yes, sir. All right. And then you are no longer were a Goonie member in early 2015? Yeah, when a goonie shot me, who would want to stay with somebody that shot them? Okay, so you were only a member for a year and a half, two years? Yes, sir. And you know, you joined the game because the 
you were what, 15 or 16? Yeah, somewhere around that age. And it's a rough neighborhood, right? Yes, sir. There is a bunch of small gangs. Yes, sir. And you felt like you needed protection, right? I guess you could say that. I didn't look at it as protection. I looked at it as we were all cool people and we all hung out together, so I was blessed. And what the Goonies did a lot was shoot at the opposition, right? The ops. Yes, sir. Okay. And all the other gangs did the same. They shot, they shot at, back. Yeah. There's no economic motive behind shooting at other people, is there? No, 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 no. It was just part of what you did. That's just what you do in the area when you are into it with people. It's called war. I think you called it a mission, right? At a point in time, it was a mission. A mission is a specific hit, a specific war, like, you know? So you were out to get them, and they were out to get you, right? Yes. I think you testified about the various roles people had in the game. Is that right? Yes, sir. And... So, Boosie was a shooter. Yes. Lala was a shooter? Yes. Little A was a shooter? Yes. Tuka was a shooter? Yes. Was a shooter? Yes. After Little A, what did you say? Tuka. You were a shooter? Yes. Millie was a shooter? Yes. Ray Ray was a shooter. Who? Ray Ray? I never said that name. So who is that? That's fine. We will take it that you don't know who that person is. Ray Parks? Have you heard that name? I've heard that name. I'm asking you, when did I say? Hang on a second. Counsel, pose a question. Okay. You never heard the name Ray Ray before. I've heard the name. Okay, and have you met a person named Ray Parks? I met him once at school. So it's fair to say that you don't necessarily know every member of the Goonies, right? That's fair. And I think you testified on direct that you had only met Smith a few times, correct? No. That's not what you said? I didn't say I met a few times. I said we hung together a few times. It's a different. You only hung together a few times. Yes, sir. So it's fair to say that you don't have close relationships with every member of the Goonie Gang, right? No. And you know, it seems like the roles are primarily a lot of the people are shooters right yes sir okay and a few people steal cars yes sir to use in shootings mostly yes sir okay and the people that steal the cars seems to also be shooters yes sir and the one time you stole a car, you got paid for it, correct? Yes, sir. Forty dollars? Yes, sir. You didn't do it for the gang. You did it because you got paid. Yes, sir. And when you were a member of this gang, you lived with your grandmother. Is that correct? Is that right? I live with my brother. Your brother. But my grandmother also had a place for me to stay, too. And you know that's the same for a lot of these Goonie members, right? Like, Mr. Blackman lived with his mom. Yes. And I think Mr. Smith lived with his grandmother. 
yes. But Alvin Vaughn, G-Boy, he had his own place, right? Yes, sir. And he had his own car, right? Yes, sir. What car did he drive? I never seen Alvin Vaughn in a car driving. Well, did you know him to own a car? I would say he probably did own a car. He would get around if he needed to move. Okay, but I have never seen him drive a car. And you had purchased weed from him on a few occasions, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And you know, he seemed to be the only person around with weed, right? Yeah, a lot of it. So Alvin Vaughn was the weed guy, right? That's the weed man. Yes, sir. And he will sell weed or he would give out weed to sell, right? Yes, sir. And he would keep the proceeds, correct? Yes, sir. So there is no real structure to the Goonies, right? It's a lot of shooters, correct? Do you understand the question? I don't. Could you elaborate? Rephrase the question. You didn't report to anybody as part of this gang, right? You didn't have a boss. A boss? Yeah. No. There was nobody in like middle management above you or anything like that. It's not a job. Yeah, okay. And there was no set of written rules to follow, right? I'm pretty sure it's just rules to the streets type of thing. Just general rules to the streets? Yes, sir. And there was no reporting upward to anybody, correct? If you needed help, you go to one of the big bros, which is the two you have over there, Romeo and T. The Vaughns. Alvin Vaughn is a fair amount older than you, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And he was the one who started Goonie Boss. Isn't that true? I didn't say that. You don't know an individual named Thomas Turnage, do you? No, sir. And Romeo doesn't talk very much, does he? To who? To you? Not recently, no. Well, back in 2014, he's not the type of person that confide in you. Do you understand the question? Yes, sir. Answer the question. Romeo would hang around me, yeah. Hang around you, but he's not talking to you about his exploits at all, is he? About his what? Activities? Criminal activities. Yeah. Well, yeah, he did talk about it, or yeah, he did not. Yes, he did. Oh. You recall being interviewed by Detective Sullivan on March 22nd, 2015, correct? I remember the interview. It was at a police station, correct? Yeah, it's after I was shot and they came and picked me up. After you were... Hang on a second. Yes, sir. Hang on a second. The court reporter has to take everything down. So wait until his question is done and then you can answer. And then, of course, counsel, wait for the answer before you pose a question. Go ahead, pose a question. And after you... So during this interview, you originally tell officers that you don't know who Romeo and T are, correct? Yes, sir. And then they call you the number one suspect, and you... I had, I'm sorry. And then you change your story, right? Sir, they told me I was the number one suspect from the beginning. I came in there charged with murder. So if anyone else was a suspect, they would have been there with me. 
I knew what they were calling me when I got to the station. Well, they specifically used the words to you. You were the number one suspect, correct? Sir, I was told that when I was picked up from the house, I knew that already. Okay, and even after you've told them that you know Romeo and T, they asked you if Mr. Blackman talks about his criminal activities and you tell them, no, he's the quiet type? Yes, sir. And, in fact, you are not scared of Mr. Blackman, are you? No, sir. Can I have a moment, Your Honor? Yes. No further questions, Your Honor.